Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Um, we're here to talk about more picture books today. Yet again. I know. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. So Me what do we too. Have? What do we have today? Oh, my gosh. So I'm so excited about the group today um, because the first one I'm going to talk about is Cheery and Chira in the Night. And this is a Japanese uh, series. It's been translated into English. This is the eighth book. Yes. In the series, um, and it comes from Enchanted Lion, which is one of my favorite publishers because they do a lot of imports. Mm -hmm. And so the books are a little bit different than what you see kind of in American publishing. Um, and I think that's really fun for kids to kind of get a different mm -hmm. um, maybe way of telling a story. So the narrative is always the same with these. Um, it's these two little girls, I believe they're twin sisters, who go off on these bike adventures. <laughs> and they live in this wonderful kind of watercolor world. I love the art in these books. Um, the end papers are gorgeous. They look almost like a, I mean, it's almost like a map, this kind of aerial view mm -hmm. with the river and everything. But they always start the same, like with their little lights and their bicycles. And it always starts with this sound, dring, 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 which is their sound for the bell. Oh. It's dark all around Cherry and Chira now, but there are a few lights at the edge of the forest. It's a black cat drink stall, <laughs> which I love that that's just so random and kind of unexpected. <laughs> I love this cat, like, welcome. Um, and so there's always some eating in the Cherry and Chira books, which I love. There's which is always, always fun. Yeah. <laughs> delicious food. <laughs> Using ingredients Cherry and Chira have never seen before, the cats prepare full moon sodas made from black grapes and other goodies. Wait, how'd the moon get in there? Um, oh, so it's kind fun. of got that page turning yeah. dynamic, like, wait, how? It asks a question, and so, you know, the reader's wondering what's going to happen next. So that would be a fun activity to take your drink outside during the full moon to yes. see if you can see the moon in your drink. I love that. I know. <laughs> fun for kids and adults. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, yeah, there's your shot of the mm -hmm. moon. Um, they're just delightful. And how they're different from maybe American picture books is there's, you know, like American picture books kind of have – a narrative that kind of, you know, rises in action and then drops off. And these are just kind of little episodes of them having little adventures. Um, kind of mellow all the way through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just they go here and then they go here and then they go here <laughs> and then the book's over. But they're lovely. Like, I love this watercolor art. I love the way that they use light, um, like the white space in the paintings to delineate shapes mm -hmm. um, instead of like a bold black line, which you see a lot. I just think they're gorgeous. Um, the whole series is really fun. Mm -hmm. There's ones where, um, like, it's Cheery and Cheery in the Meadow, and it's kind of miniature. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Let me look in the back. Uh, there's one where they're under sea. There's one in the winter. Um, but this one in the night, I think, is especially magical, and I just love it. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. And you could do some fun activities with this. I thought, you know, any cooking type activity would yes. be really Nice. Oh, because I forgot to show that page. Should oh, I show yes. it? Because <laughs> um, that would be a eating. lot of fun to do. So you could use it as a um, supplement to a cooking unit and mm -hmm. just, because, yeah, they have their cookies, their crunchy animal crackers, <sighs> and then the animals pop out almost like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, so that and would be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of fun to do, yeah. I think, uh, with the kids. So if you have access to a kitchen at your child care or mm -hmm. just for at home. I think these really lend themselves, given the size, to work with a smaller group yeah. or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but the illustrations are so beautiful with those watercolors there. Um so, yeah, um, you know, you could use it as a introduction to a unit from other countries, too. Right. So you could so you could find picture books from all different countries and include this one mm -hmm. here, which will flow nicely into our next one a little <laughs> bit, too. <laughs> yes, it um, will. Cooking and. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yes, Chimmy and Cherry, always fun. They are. Yeah, and I just, like, noticed that there's a whole thing about the band, and there's, like, a little parade. So there could also be some sound mm -hmm. stuff that you could do, like having a little parade. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, finding things around the house to make noise with. Yes. Always a good time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's Cherry and Chira in the Night by Kea Doi, D-O-I. Nice. So like you mentioned our next one, Mary Ellen. Yes. Do you want to introduce that? Yeah, so this is... Um 
how do we say I love you? And so this is all about a family, um, the different ways they say I love you. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually saying I love you. Once again, we've got some beautiful um, end papers here. Um, so this family, um, they're talking about, um, you know, their family loves them, but they don't always say, I love you. And so they go through different ways of how they say it. Like mom is cooking. Food is a big part in this story, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, grandpa walks her to school, which we thought was really fun, too. Yeah. So there's different ways, and it goes throughout the book and just shows different ways that they say, I love you. The fun thing about this book is there is a heart hidden on every two-page spread. And we have to admit, we had a hard time <laughs> yeah. finding the heart on some of these pages. This was one of them. We think it's in the grandma's hand up here. Um, but some of them were just a little bit harder than yeah. others. This one was in a cloud. Um, there were a couple we never did find. <laughs> yes, there we'll were. Admit. <laughs> there were. But I love, this is one of my favorite pages where the family is sitting together and they're talking about um, telling stories mm -hmm. with each other, too. So I really like this. The um, color scheme, I think, is just so pretty. And this is what is nice about this book because they... Um, have at the back of the book a glossary where they have Mandarin Chinese to English for mm -hmm. some of the words and then Taiwanese to English. And so I, for some of them, I wish they had more pronunciation. Yeah. With, <laughs> that would be my only thing because I don't know how to say some of these words. But Yeah, um, if you wanted to read it aloud, you'd have to Google the pronunciation yes, of some of these terms first. Right. Um, but I thought it was really fun. Um, and you could do, it would be great to introduce to a cooking unit. Mm -hmm. You could talk about what, was, what are some ways you say I love you without actually saying I love you. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, it's a nice discussion, too, for friendship and sharing yeah. also. So I think there's a lot that you can do with this one in terms of the um, family unit and what, you know, how how your family shows love to mm -hmm. each other. And it may be different depending on different families so um, and different family makeups too. So I thought that this was um, really just a sweet book mm -hmm. and would be a really nice one to use, either in a group or one-on-one. -on -one. I think one-on-one -on -one is better in terms of finding all the hearts on the pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to be too hard to see from yeah. far away. What I really liked um, the multi-cult or multi -cult the multi-generational family yes. in this mm -hmm. story. The grandparents live with the family mm -hmm. and they're a big part of the family life. There's one page where you see them having dinner and one of the ways that the family says I love you is they let the elders pick their part of the food first. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the little girl talks about how sometimes those pieces end up on her plate anyway. Yeah. Which I thought mm -hmm. was so sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This page? spread here. Mm -hmm. Um so, yeah, I just, I loved that aspect of mm -hmm. it and how big a role the grandparents play mm -hmm. in all of this. I would have liked to have seen that as a child, too, because my grandmother yeah. lived with us during the winters, mainly, because the mm -hmm. winters were too hard. But it was just nice to have an, to see another family where there's more than just the immediate family members. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Definitely. Yes, and I love, you know, based all around food again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> my love language. Yeah. yeah. And like speaking mm -hmm. of love languages, I, I think this is important because there are other ways to say I love you mm -hmm. than words. Right. And I, I gestures is a huge mm -hmm. way, you know, yeah. or I think in the book, the <laughs> five love languages, there's like acts of service. And mm -hmm. I think like, you know, doing yeah. things for people is yes. a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would be a nice one if you do holidays. Um, this would be a nice one, I think, to... Um, go around Valentine's Day. Yes. Mm -hmm. So without being over Valentine's Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like our next book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. awesome. Thanks for bringing that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> mm -hmm. speaking of Valentine's Day, we've got Grumpy Monkey Valentine Gross Out, um, which right away that cracks me up. Grumpy Monkey is getting a little overexposed. Um, he's a character that came out maybe five years ago and there's middle grade books like graphic mm -hmm. novels, there's picture books, there's board books. 
I think there's beginning <laughs> readers now. <laughs> like the publisher, I think, is just like really jumping on this character's popularity. But this book really stands out to me. It, it's funny. It's original. Um, for older kids. For older uh, kids, yeah. yeah I would say, I would like, say what, elementary. Like kindergarten, first, second. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> Jim Panzi was enjoying a nap in the sun when a voice awakened him. Jim, do you like my flower? Tweeted Oxpecker. My boyfriend gave it to me because we're in love. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like it makes a really funny read aloud. Mm-hmm. Um, just all this gross romantic talk. And, of course, Jim is like, love, gross. And... His bird friend is like, don't be jealous. Also, my boyfriend is making me a romantic dinner for Valentine's Day, tweeted Oxpecker. So, like, <laughs> again, with it just rubbing it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, like, it's all about love and kisses. Um, and I love this spread where wherever Jim goes, he sees this sort of nonsense. You know, couples <laughs> gazing into each other's eyes, couples exchanging cards, couples slow dancing, couples giggling for no reason. <laughs> I think this could be fun for kids to identify like, mm-hmm. oh, those are laughing hyenas. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, cuddling couples, snuggling couples, and worst of all, kissing couples. And so he decides this is the grossest holiday. <laughs> I just love his indignance. Yeah. Um, but then his friend tells him that kissing is gross, but Valentine's Day is about much more than that, that mm-hmm. it's about love and showing people that you care about them. Um, so he goes home and he talks to his dad about it, and his dad's like, you know, it's about the love that parents feel for their children. Mm-hmm. It's telling people what you appreciate about them. Um, and so you see him, like, you know, thinking about all the good things that he has and how he wants to share that mm-hmm. with others. So I think this is really fun. Um you know, not to genderize kids that hate <laughs> Valentine's Day, but I think this is a fun one for boys that are just like, oh, God, <laughs> Valentine's Day, ew. Yeah. Um, just a lot of fun. I think this would be a fantastic, like I said, read aloud. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But then there's also kind of some stuff in there, like identifying animals could be mm-hmm. fun. Um, I don't know. You could do something like make the grossest Valentine you can think of. I don't know. Or I the think sappiest it would be one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if you buy the book, it comes with Valentine's stickers. So we right. take the stickers out just because they would never last. Um, right. But this would be a great introduction to if you were doing Valentine's Day and, mm-hmm. and making Valentines right. for people. Um, so that would be kind of fun, I think, for an introduction there. And just, I love the message that, you know, it's just, it shows, you know, how you care about right. people. Um, so that's kind of fun. Like it doesn't have to be gross. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So um, just a fun Valentine's Day book. Yeah. And, you know, for those of you out there looking for something new and different, this and takes fun. a little different, <laughs> yeah, little different approach yeah. to it. Yeah. So it's that. not sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that's refreshing. Yeah. So what do we have last? Um, the last one we have left, um, for all the dog lovers out there, it's What's Up Pup? How Our Furry Friends Communicate and What They Are Saying. So this is just reading dog language. Um, again, you get some really cute end papers here with all different types of dogs on here. But um, they basically tell us that dogs are communicating with us all the time. We just may not realize what they're trying to say. Um, but nice bright colors in here. It's a rhyming text. Um, so when you and your buddy go out for a walk, watch very closely. You'll see your pup talk. <laughs> so it talks all about, you know, kind of the signs that people, um, that dogs give to people and to other dogs. Um, and then um, one thing is they talk a lot about rears and um, <laughs> the dogs sniffing each other's butt and what that means. <laughs> And how they say hello. Um, so just be aware of that um, in there, which, you know, the kids will laugh at. But they'll also realize, oh, that's why they do that. <laughs> yes. So just a really fun one about just the different things that pups do and how to read dog language. I think it's a lot of fun. What was uh, that page just now about P-mail? Oh, yes. I think they it leave. was the one right before yes. that. Yeah. Yes, where when they pee on things, they're leaving their little mark. <laughs> their so pee mail. <laughs> that was a fun one, too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, something I think it would be a great present for the dog lover mm-hmm. um, there. And um, this, you know, another one, too, it ends with I love you, too. So you could use this one you during could. the month of February if you're talking <laughs> about love and 
And so, um, yes, lots of fun. And at the end, there's a great author's note um, here and talking about the dog language that they are showcasing in this book. Um, and so there's even a bibliography in here of things that they've referenced also. So, you know, this could be really good for somebody who's just getting a new puppy. Oh, my gosh, yes. You know, this would be a fun one. Be a fun one to do what's your favorite type of animal or what's your favorite type of dog. Because mm-hmm. um, you'll get some kids that say, well, I don't like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, what's your favorite animal? So a nice introduction to um, pets. Mm-hmm. If you're talking about pet care and all of that. So um, just a really fun one for the dog lover. Well, we're both dog lovers, so yeah. <laughs> it, it really speaks to us. We both love this us. book. Yeah. Um, and just the illustrations are so much fun, too, with the different mm-hmm. different dogs and the bright colors. So it'll really catch kids' yes, kids' attention. Yeah. Definitely. I so. like this one because it's, non, it's a nonfiction picture yes. book. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes those can be hard to find like a nonfiction book that's easy enough for mm-hmm. preschoolers. Yes. Um, and this is definitely that. We actually have this in our non our children's nonfiction section yeah. um, because it is an informative book and it's got that great information in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned so much from the facts in the back of the book. Yes. That mm-hmm. I did not know that dogs can smell your emotion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which yeah. I've always kind of wondered, you know, like sometimes mm-hmm. if I'm having a bad day, you know, mine will mm-hmm. come up to me and cuddle and it, it yeah, I didn't realize, I thought maybe they were just like seeing something. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize they could actually smell your emotion. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, great um, nonfiction that reads as a narrative fiction book, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, that's always a great introduction to nonfiction to kids, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love um, the art in this, just how expressive the lines are. Yeah. Which I mm-hmm. guess is important in a book where you're talking about an animal's body language, Mm -hmm. but it's really, um, you know, with some pretty simple lines, they're able to just convey all this feeling, you know, like like the sternness Mm -hmm. of this dog, the apprehensiveness of Mm -hmm. this dog. I love this page where they're doing the (laughs) zoomies. Like that face is just everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I just, this is a really solid book. I love it. Yeah, no, the the artwork in it is, is great. Mm-hmm. In terms of the expressions and things like that, too. So a fun one, an enjoyable one. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Well, that's our books for today. Mm-hmm. And thank you very much for joining us today. And you all have a great day. Bye. Bye.